Okay, we are live. Hello, everyone. Welcome to 20 Minutes Event Profs Marketing Live with myself, Sabrina Myers from Hot Hospitality Exchange, and my partner, Jason Greenman from Acomo. Hello. Now, this is something new that we've launched uh, that we're going to be doing every single week. We're going to be going live for 20 minutes talking about all things event profs marketing, especially focusing on social media, digital marketing, and small to medium businesses when it comes to marketing. So today our topic is on social media platforms. Now, if you are out there, let us know um, where you're joining us from, drop us um, some comments, say hello. If you have any questions along the way on social media platforms, please do drop them in the comments and we'll bring them up here on the screen and try to answer them as best as possible. So I'm gonna hand it over to Jason. Jason, I have a question for you. Cool. Shoot. Let me know. What is like, or how do you define a social media platform? All right. Good question. So first of all, let's start the timer. Cause I think part of this is to keep it within the, uh, the 20 minutes, right? Try to get as much value as we can within this. So here little timer. How's that look? That looks wonderful. There we go. All right. Let's go. So what is a social media network? Um, it's a really good question and something I think is debatable. Um, I'm just going to pull something directly off of uh, Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. um, so a social networking service is an online platform which people use to build social networks or with other people who share similar personal or career interests, activities, backgrounds, or real life connections. It's pretty like pretty long, but um, so I mean, <laughs> People usually think Facebook, they think Twitter, they think Instagram, LinkedIn, obviously. Um, yeah. But I mean, I've also seen people consider things like YouTube, um, Twitch, uh, even WhatsApp as social networks. Um, I think for our industry, for the events industry, we yeah. can probably ignore some of those um, and focus on on the ones that, you know, that that are being used the most in the industry. Absolutely. And um, I mean, I think really it is a place where people come together and have conversations. You can really focus on that. But let's let's today focus on maybe um, on the ones that we're using in the events industry. Yeah. So, I mean, the the first question that I would ask is yeah. is really where where is your audience, right? So if you're on social media, the first thing to look for is where where are the people that you need to talk to? Um, exactly. I mean, for you, for you, where would that be? So for me, um, one piece of advice that I have or I was given in terms of what social media platform I should be picking um, and being active on was that, first of all, um, try to be on every single platform in terms of, you know, uh, reserving your username and handle so that if in the future or at any point you actually want to go on a platform and you realize that there's a lot of potential there and your clients might be on there, then at least your username is saved, right? Mm -hmm. And it's not like, uh, you know, uh, I'm going to have to call myself something completely different in a different platform. But mm -hmm. for me, I would say... Um, I obviously am on LinkedIn very actively, Instagram very actively, and on Twitter very actively. I do have a Facebook page, I do have a TikTok account, and I do now am is well, am I semi-active on Clubhouse, which is the new kid on the block in terms of social media apps. Mm -hmm. I do have a YouTube channel, and I do have what am I missing right now? I feel like I'm missing one. Is that all? That's all. I think that's all. <laughs> But so it just means that this is all the places that I am present online mm -hmm. and yeah. where um, I use, I would say, Instagram, LinkedIn and Twitter the most actively because I feel that's where my audience and my community and exactly. potential clients are. The rest I use as supporting. Yeah. What about you? I'm, I'm actually quite similar. Um, I... I guess there's kind of two things that I look for when I'm choosing a platform. So number one I mentioned was the audience. So where, where's my audience? The audience for me, for what we do, is I'm looking for event professionals, event planners, event organizers that need help finding services to, to run events. Exactly. Um, and those people tend to be on LinkedIn. It's B2B. LinkedIn is a B2B network, and mm -hmm. it's perfect for the messages and the communication that we have. Um, the company, we're also on all the ones that you've mentioned, but we're probably most heavily invested in LinkedIn, um, Instagram, 
are probably the two the two main ones at the moment. Um, and because the second thing that I look for is also where are the top creators in the industry, right? Yes. So if you're looking at where's your audience and where are the creators, there's a good chance that you're going to be involved in the conversations that, that you need to be involved in. Um, and in our industry, I do think that uh, LinkedIn, Instagram are probably the strongest. Uh, recently, I've seen Twitter starting to come up a little bit more. Um, yeah. But I would only go into Twitter once we get to some other notes later, um, depending on the type of content that you want to produce. But uh, but for me, I, I'm I'm very similar to you. I'm I'm focusing on LinkedIn and, and Instagram at the moment, and and actually YouTube as well. Um, yeah, if, exactly. So in my you, head, if you consider I've never that really defined media. YouTube as a social media platform yeah. because you're mm -hmm. not. I guess you're com you're you're communicating with your followers through comments um, that they leave on your under your videos um right. and you can obviously also stream live from youtube um but i always thought that you know when you're a vlogger like i'm a vlogger i create the vlog i put it on uh, my youtube channel and and but it's not a social process so i'm not engaging right. or interacting so mm -hmm. i never really i don't know defined it as a, a social media platform but yeah. You have other yeah. information, I am told. <laughs> I think the fact that there's uh, you can produce content and have conversations, even though the comment section of YouTube can often be uh, a minefield of, <laughs> is the, I find the quality is not as great. Yeah. Yes, exactly. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, it can be entertaining. Um, yeah. I think the fact that there is, you can interact with with followers. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe that's why it can be defined as a social network. But um, I guess it's because you get subscribers, right? So if someone yeah. subscribes and you have a following through your subscribers, that obviously, I guess, then equates it to right. yes, being a social media platform. So anywhere right. where you have followers, where you have an audience, where you have um, your community, um, that would be defined as a social media. Now, um, what social media platforms do you think are actually not so relevant to be on for event profs? For event profs? Ooh, <laughs> that's a good question. Yeah. Um, okay. I think that some of the newer ones are worth testing. Yeah. I'm not sure that it's worth investing your time yet. Um, mm -hmm. and, and every all of this also depends on your resources, doesn't it? Because yeah. um, like my strategy is I'm, I'm really trying to focus on two to three because I yeah. know that our resources to have quality, consistent content, I can't be on 10 producing the same amount of content for all of them. Exactly. And it's really not really a good idea to, to share the exact same thing across every, every single uh, platform. Yes. So, um, because of that, and we're I, I think that in one of our next few episodes where we yeah. talk content strategy, because that's an right. excellent point that you brought up. So I, I think that um, going back to your original questions, which ones are not? I think some of the new ones. Like I'm, I dabble in TikTok, but I have to say I don't know how many event profs or let's say my audience, uh, yeah. the people, the event planners that are buying these services. I don't think many of them are on their TikTok looking for event prof information. I think it's really cool. I think there's a lot of potential, yeah. but in terms of the the return on investment of the time I need to do to do TikToks to get it into the funnel to get leads, I'm not sure it's worth my time. Um, Clubhouse, we'll see. I think we, um, you know how I feel about at the moment i think yeah yeah um, I, well you know on on to what you mentioned about tiktok um and this is one of the platforms i am on i wouldn't say i'm active on but i'll tell you what i do use tiktok for i use actually tiktok to get inspired for the mm -hmm. kind of content i can create so mm -hmm. as a content creator tiktok is actually a great um i even would describe it as a micro learning platform in terms of content so if I go on there and I look up, say, you know, I'm all about social media and there are content creators on there. They do the most amazing videos where they give advice on social media, um, visual marketing, SEO, all of that stuff. And they manage to do it all in either 15 like, seconds or, or 30 seconds or a minute. Right. Yeah. Um, but also the um, the platform itself is very creative when you, you want to create video content. You can use a lot of very cool features like the green screen and putting your, you know, um, text and things everywhere and different filters. So I actually use it more as a creation app. Yeah. 
mm -hmm. to create videos because the beauty of TikTok is its shareability. Yeah. It gives you enormous shareability to share your content across any other platforms that you would be active on. So mm -hmm. I've seen quite a few event props actually. For example, um, Yomi Rose, she mm -hmm. creates TikToks. You know, she's next gen. She creates yeah. TikTok. She's very active on TikTok. Yeah. Narmi as well, very active on TikTok. Mm -hmm. They create amazing TikToks and then they reshare to LinkedIn and Instagram accordingly, depending on the topic or the subject. So I think whilst it might not be somewhere that we should all be on, we should be on it to be learning from it. And then being very um, selective and with, um, I would say, intent using it to yep. create content and, you know, add it as part of, in a way, part of the marketing arsenal. That's a great point. It's a great point. Um, I think you're right. Like in terms of publishing on TikTok, I guess I'm not sure what the the ROI for publishing on TikTok, but it's true. It's a great tool for creating videos. Um, the the editing uh, is very very easy. The adding the music and and uh, graphics. So that's it's a great point. And and I see a lot of people really uh, leveraging that and and resharing to even to Instagram. Even though Instagram has Reels, you'll see people having their TikToks on Instagram probably because the app. Is, is so easy to and use. And that's an interesting strategy by TikTok, you know, because yes. they're like, well, we're not worried because they're sharing TikToks to Instagram. Yeah. So they've already done the work and they've already given us the yeah. FaceTime. We're just yeah. resharing. So. Exactly, Absolutely. exactly. So, I mean, another thing, getting back to your question about which one's not to be on, um, I would probably... It really depends on the size. You know, if we're talking mostly to small businesses, I, I would be very uh, careful. I'd say it's probably a good idea to, to like you said, reserve your name for, for all of them, uh, just in case, because you don't know which one is suddenly going to shoot to the top. Um, but put 80% of your, your effort into two or three. Um, yeah. And that's based on, you know, where's your audience again? Uh, where are the top con content creators? Another great thing to do is, is just look at your competition. Like look at the people in the industry that uh, businesses that you consider to be competition, where, where are they publishing? Because uh, businesses will not be publishing somewhere unless they're, they're getting something back in return. Um, yeah. it's, they're not going to waste their time on, on, on networks. And also another great thing to look when you're looking at competition is look at the engagement that they're getting from their posts. So Absolutely. if you see them publishing somewhere and they're publishing a lot, but there's no comments, there's no likes, maybe because the audience isn't there. Um, so it's another, another way to filter down which one is right, which one is right for you. And I think also, you know, with any social media platform, part of the strategy, which, you know, we'll talk about this in future episodes, you know, um, is, is bringing together what you do best and mm -hmm. what your audience wants. You know, you find that, that, in, that overlapping bit, right? Mm -hmm. And what's really important is also which platforms are you going to be able to get most creative on and showcase right. creatively, right? We're talking format, so content mm -hmm. type. If you are someone that is podcasting, then, you know, LinkedIn is great. You can put your links into your podcast. You can use Instagram. You can even share your links across on Twitter. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and that's probably an interesting question. Um, is podcasting also a social media tool? Like, is it a platform or an app? Because obviously there's a big you know, number, and there's quite a lot of um, event props now coming into the podcast mm -hmm. industry and really embracing it. Yep. Um, but I do think that social media is how you spread the love with podcasts, mm -hmm. probably yes. not on any other, well, Clubhouse would be the closest thing to right. a social media yeah. podcast like app. Anyway. Right, yeah, true, true. Uh, the I think podcasting, um, I know some of the applications, uh, I use Spreaker for mine, for my podcast mm -hmm. breakouts. Um, they have a platform that allows people to go into Spreaker.com and find podcasts and comments. Maybe you could argue, argue that that's a social network because there's a little bit of interaction, but I doubt that the traffic on there is very high. I mean, people are still going to Spotify, Apple, Google, and then and then we distribute it on the social network. So I think you're right. It's really interesting podcast, though, because, I mean, in March, which I can't believe that that's almost a year ago since the first round of, of lockdowns. Yeah. Um, but I remember doing some research then, and the number of podcasts for event props is very is very small. And it's yeah. it's been really cool to see this like blossom of uh, of podcasting. It's um, I mean, when I went on to Spotify the first time and looked for event props as a as a keyword on Spotify, it may have been two, and now there's there's dozens, and that's it's really right. cool. There's it's a lot amazing. of great content. Fantastic. 
Yeah. But I also yeah. think that's why Clubhouse is doing so well because mm. we do love the platform of voice. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. it's, I don't want to say you're either voice or video. <laughs> yeah. There are people that yeah. can do both, but yeah. there seems to be this definitive um, division of, well, I prefer voice, so I'm going to stay on this end, and I prefer video, so I'm going to stay on this end. And at some point, we might use different platforms to merge together. There's a really cool comment <laughs> from Jack for us here, and it says TikTok. I'm learning slowly. <laughs> slowly. <laughs> Aren't we all? Aren't we all? Jack, Jack, I believe, also is in the world of uh, podcasting. And yes, I think a lot of us are very hesitant and very doing everything in moderation with TikTok. But my advice to you, Jack, is just watch the videos and, and um, create an algorithm where they only show you videos of what you want to see. Yeah. Um, and so you get inspired more in terms of content and like what people are actually talking about and how they present it instead of creating something for the platform because it's not relevant to, for you to create any reels or TikToks. Then it's no yeah. point doing you know the creation of it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I create fun ways, um, fun videos on TikTok. Video has always been my medium. So when TikTok opened, I was like, Oh my god, this is amazing. And I could get ideas from other people and create my own videos for reels and whatnot on Instagram mm -hmm. um, and, and share them across every other platform. So, you know, I think absolutely in moderation. Yeah. So that yeah, moves yeah. us to what, just a little bit over five minutes. How are we doing, Jason? Good, <laughs> good. I mean, um, yeah. I, so going to TikTok, I mean, this format of the 20 minutes, uh, I'm anybody that knows me, like uh, anytime I have meetings in the office, I actually bought like an egg timer. So I started timing meetings because I, I like the pressure to fit something into amount of time because you can get so much more value out of it. Um, if there's not a time limit, things tend to just like go way too long and people waste, waste time. And actually there's something with, with TikTok is you got your 15 seconds or your one minute to yeah. get your idea out there. And I, and I do, I love that aspect of it. It's, it's really impressive to see somebody um, do a one minute video educating you on some topic that would normally take you, you know, half an hour to an hour to, to read a blog or watch a YouTube video. Um, that aspect's really cool. Um, what else, what else have we got? Um, so I, let's talk about our industry. So like you mentioned, what we think are going to be, what social media platforms should the event profs be on? Um, I think we agree that LinkedIn, LinkedIn. is, is top I mean, would you would you say that's the top one number one for me i would definitely say linkedin is number one professionally because really it's the only professional network out there at the minute yeah. uh, in mm -hmm. terms of social media and it's the one that you can verify who is looking at your content mm -hmm. who is following you you can look up the profiles you can see whether it's legit or not um you can see actively who is following you. and the analytics are brilliant if you have for example i downloaded the shield app to measure my analytics and it's brilliant um and i can follow who i want to follow and you can really kind of niche down and get very specific with your audience and community of who you want to be involved with and interact with hmm. now instagram i absolutely love and i feel that event props are starting to embrace however it is a additional layer of work obviously yeah. when it comes to creating the content and actually being active on the platform. Um, some of us in the industry have been doing it very, very well. For example, Juliet Tripp does it mm -hmm. incredibly well. Irina Graf from the Mice blog, she's very, very active. Yeah. Heidi Lebang from the Mice Guru, you know, they're, they're doing some amazing stuff on Instagram and they have cultivated a community on Instagram, which is yep. brilliant, you know, which um, I think these two are probably power players. Mm -hmm. Then I'll bring on Twitter which yep. I think is a great platform to have individual conversations mm -hmm. with people on the platform. Yep. I know lots of events that have started be because of Twitter conversations. Um, I think it's a, a, a fantastic um, platform and ho has always been one. Um, I'm not sure about the new edition of Fleets. The jury is still out on that. I don't think every platform needs to have a story function. That is exhausting. <laughs> um, but I do think that Twitter is really fantastic for having micro conversations and direct conversations with people that you want to have. And you can also get very specific about cultivating a community and curating a community um, on that platform. So that will be my three. The jury is yep. still out on Clubhouse. We are embracing mm -hmm. it like heroes, I want to say. Yep. Um, 
but I also feel like so many people are on there now and there's so many talks taking place like you know I want to do moderation so mm -hmm. you know I'm now got already and the life cycle the life cycle has been so short already in terms of it being so saturated, you know, in terms of, okay, now all these people are on it. They're all having different rooms and chats. Mm -hmm. Now I got to make a conscious decision intentionally. What am I going to be a part of? Yeah. If I create yeah. my own room, what is my priority for creating that room and what discussions am I having? So yeah, it's, it's interesting, but I would say those are the four right now. Yeah. The the animal or the the elephant in the room is is Facebook. Uh, yeah. Nobody talks about Facebook anymore, but I have to admit that, I mean, there's still, a billion people on Facebook, and and we don't we don't invest much into Facebook, but I, I do believe that you have like we we should. Uh, I think it's I one think of the ones that's very powerful. And yeah. you know, you've seen the delicate wranglers. Obviously, they've got over twenty one thousand event profs on right. their community group, and they're doing a stellar job of bringing the events community together mm -hmm. to a point where no one else has been actually able to do. Anything yep. similar, they've been doing such a fabulous job. So the potential is there, you know. Yep. And if you are an event professional who wants to, for example, start a course, start a community, give out information, do streaming, then Facebook is actually yep. a very, very powerful tool to do Absolutely. that. Also with, for paid marketing and yep. SEO and all of that. I know yeah. with the agenda that I set up last year with the four ladies, mm -hmm. we stream live to our Facebook page. And yeah. it's a great place to disseminate information and to collect information and to keep everyone as a community together. And it allows sharing of so many types of different formats of content. So it's definitely a powerful tool. And I do think one that is very underutilized by yeah. the event industry. Yeah. But getting back, I mean, we got five cool. seconds, so I'm just going to summarize. So, to uh, all right, we're done. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, just to summarize, like I would be selective. Start slow. Uh, figure out where your audience is. Uh, look where the top uh, content creators are. Check out your competition, and and narrow it down. You know, I wouldn't. If you spread yourself too thin, the the content's going to be mm, less quality. You won't be to be as consistent. So I think I'm on the same page. You have the ones that are in your backpack, but let's focus on on two or three. And if anybody needs help uh, choosing one or wants to talk to us more about it, shoot us a DM. Leave something in the comments here, and Sabrina and I will be uh, more than happy to to do what we can to answer. Absolutely. Thank you all for joining us for this 20 minutes of Enprofs Marketing live today. Um, we've got a oh a, uh, a some wonderful questions coming in. We're all going to get back to your um, questions and answers in the comments. Keep dropping them in as I know this video is going to be thrown around a couple of times and we will get back to you. And of course, don't forget to connect with myself and Jason here on LinkedIn. We are also, as we've mentioned, on a few different social media platforms. Mm -hmm. So please be sure to follow us there as well. And we wish you a wonderful Wednesday. You know, hopefully this helped in terms of hump day. And we <laughs> will see you next week. All right. So take care, guys. Thank you, Jason. It was great. Um, we'll see you soon. Good luck out there. Bye. Bye. Bye.